The huh? council meeting of October 19th, 2021 is called to order. I think we'll have Mr. Eric Disco lead us in our uh, elite pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Eric. All right, Donna, let's see who's here tonight. Okay. Councilmember McDowell. Present. Councilmember Peace. Here. Councilmember Bode. Here. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Here. Mayor Dorsey. Here. Councilmember Inesco. Here. And Councilmember Schmidt. Here. All right, thank you guys. Let's start with any changes for the agenda tonight from the council? No? Okay. At this time, I'd like to remind the members of the public that they can make comments during the public comment period as well as any item listed on the business agenda or the action agenda. When making public comment, you will need to raise your hand electronically on the Zoom app, state your full name and whether you live or reside in the city limits, Mason County or reside elsewhere. Option number one, join the Zoom meeting by clicking on the link that is displayed on the city's web page. The link is listed on the agendas and minutes page under the tab that says more. Option number two, email city manager Jeff Knighton. Or option number three, call Jeff's office phone. Both email address and office number are displayed on the screen of Mason Webb's TV streaming video. All right, let's move right into council reports of, of their boards. Anybody have a council report? Oh, we got lots tonight. Okay, Kathy. Um, it's a, really not a, a board report. I just want to let everyone know that I will be attending the Heroes for Housing on uh, Thursday evening. It was going to be at the governor's mansion, but it was such a small space, they put it on live streaming. So I will be doing that, um, talking about the different housing for our heroes, our first responders, our veterans, whatever. So I will be doing that. All right, Deidre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last Friday, the Peninsula Regional Transportation Project Organization Executive uh, Board meeting, and that group was taking another look at its legislative priorities. Um, while there are no specific projects listed within City of Shelton, there are a number of initiatives that are in line with some of the things we've talked about, including maintaining um, existing infrastructure, providing long-term funding, um, making sure that funding provided from the state for previously awarded projects is maintained, et cetera. So I'll be forwarding that information along to city manager Knighton so he can share that with the council. We also heard um, a presentation on a duck bush project that, there, that Fish and Wildlife is proposing in connection with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's been happening for some years now, um, but they are seeking some capital funding, not transportation dollars for that. And it would include a realignment of 101 um, of Hamahama. So some really interesting things that came out of that meeting um, and I'm sure we'll see more as we move towards the legislative session. Anyone else? Okay. Let's move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as published? I move to approve the consent agenda as published. All right. A second. Who was that? Second. Okay, thanks, Megan. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as published. All in favor say aye. 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 All, all opposed? Motion carries. Donna, do we have anyone interested in making public comments? Let me take a look here.
I don't see anyone interested in making a public comment just during this general public comment time, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Okay, so we are recessing from our regular meeting to open a public hearing. Interim Finance Director Terry Schnitzer is here to share information about the 2022 ad valorem taxes. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Donna, can you start the video? It says I cannot start the video. Okay. Now see if it'll work. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome. So thank you again, Mayor and uh, Deputy Mayor and Council Members. Um, we bring it to you tonight. Uh, the ordinance to set the regular uh, and EMS levies for collection in 2022. This ordinance will levy the statutory maximum ad valorem tax by increasing levy collections by 1% from the highest level levy amount. And this will include the new construction and state assessed property that is legally allowed for add-ons. The property tax collections are allowed to, are allowed to be increased um, by the lower of 1% or the implicit price deflator. And that um, implicit price, price deflator for uh, calculating the increase of 2021 property tax collections is 3.86%, which is higher than our um, statutory limit of 1%. So we are allowed to take that full 1%. So with that, um, the increase dollar amount for 2022 is just over $21,000 over from 2021 collections. So I just um, ask you to um, forward this uh, 2022 Evaloran tax ordinance to the November 16th meeting. All right, thank you. Donna, has anyone signed up for public testimony? No, Mr. Mayor, there is no one signed up. Okay. Will you please give us a reading of ordinance number 1978-1021. Ordinance number 1978-1021, an ordinance of the city of Shelton, Washington, setting the amount of the annual ad valorem taxes in the city of Shelton for calendar year 2022. Okay. A motion, please. I move to forward the 2022 ad valorem tax ordinance to the November 16th council meeting for the second public hearing for further consideration and action and allow the public another opportunity to be heard on the ordinance under consideration. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Okay. Well, this time, uh, ask each council member for questions or make comments. Again, it's a small amount, and I, and I think that we could we could forego this this year, or I believe Deputy Mayor Peterson, so that we could collect it and use it for assistance for businesses or utility bills or um, something like that. I, I just think that we've had a lot of help from the state and the federal government that we could pass on a little bit to our citizens. All right. <clears throat> Mayor Peterson. I just wanted to point out that I think that one of the things we discussed last time that still for me maintains the heart of this issue is that while we have the opportunity to not take this 1%, the 1% does not begin to outpace the increase we're seeing in expenses for material supplies and providing those services. So um, as Councilmember Onisco pointed to, if there were a, a need, a specific need that we saw that we could reallocate some funds to provide relief to those residents that we felt were having an especially difficult time, I'd be open to that conversation, but I don't think that it's a good precedent for us to set to say, we're not collect what we're able to when we are already struggling to meet infrastructure needs and provide the services that we've seen our residents say time and again that they need. and to meet that quality of service. So um, I, I'm in favor of moving forward with that valorum tax. Um, and I think that it's something we're gonna have to continue to work towards. I agree, uh, Deidre. Um, Jeff, can you 
add in here if if we were not to collect this doesn't it take a lot of time to reinstate this later there is a process to reinstate it later it's called bank capacity uh, so we could reinstate it later which would uh, cause a bump over one percent at you know at whichever time the council desires to reinstate um, uh, but there is a process to do it. Um, so it, it completely within council's purview, whether uh, they would like to approach it that way or not. The other thing I would like to point out is that it, uh, it compounds. So the loss this year uh, is a little over 21,000, uh, but in future years, uh, and as council has seen the 10 year financial forecast, and we will be including that in your packet, it, uh, the problem compounds over time. All right, so we have a we have a motion and a second to forward the 2022 ad valorem tax ordinance to the November 16th council meeting for the second public hearing for further consideration and action and allow the public another opportunity to be heard in on the ordinance under consideration. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right, motion carries. This public hearing is closed and we are opening another public hearing regarding the 2022 preliminary budget. We have another item for Terry. Thank you, Jim. 2022 preliminary budget. Okay, thank you again. Um, yep. Everybody, so uh, I bring to you tonight um, this ordinance to um, uh, for the 20, adoption of the 2022 annual report or annual budget, excuse me, and um, provide the mechanism of the city to expend funds for the purposes established in the budget. Uh, the budget totals just over 41 million with a general fund appropriation of almost uh, 15, uh, over 15 million. Um, the ordinance also provided by RCW uh, adopts continuing appropriation for all capital projects appropriated in the adopted budget. Uh, with the continuing appropriation, capital project budgets do not lapse at the year end. Rather, the budget remains in place until the project completion. So within this budget, we have um, the, the projects that are being um, spent for, with the ARPA dollars, um, which include the Western Gateway, which is, uh, in, in our ARPA dollars we received was um, 2.9, almost 2.98 million. And so uh, we're gonna be using 1.3, over 1.3 million on Western Gateway, which Jay will go into a little bit more in detail. And then also we'll also have the, um, the AMI project, the automated meter infrastructure for 800,000. And we believe these um, are within your strategic goals for uh, account accountable government and the community life portions of your, of your goals. And also what we have, um, we included um, a second code enforcement officer, which we believe is part of your community life st strategic uh, goals for the city. And um, also we'll be bringing the 10 year financial uh, forecast to you as an exhibit in uh, at the November 16th meeting for you to review. Um, and then just to mention that we're transitioning to the capital funds for water, sewer, and storm. Um, we believe this will be um, very a transparent way for you as a council, citizens, and our staff to know what's exactly being spent in these capital funds and also the funding sources to these funds. And also we are expanding um, the capital resource funds, which will help, again, be very transparent to how we're spending those public dollars for 
the rate one and two monies, the uh, trans transportation benefit district dollars and the TIF dollars, which the um, traffic impact fees. And again, this will be very clear and transparent to staff, council and, and um, our citizens. And um, another note is that um, for transparency and um, for a, to be accountable for our dollars, um, public works and finance staff are going to um, reinvent our public project meetings to where we are um, discussing all the pro uh, capital projects, what are the fundings for these projects, making sure that we have funding for these um, before we bring them to council for um, as a approved project. So with that, I just ask you to move uh, the 2022 annual budget to the November 16th meeting. We, uh, council, we do have uh, uh, Public Works Director Harris and Community Development Director uh, Ziegler uh, to talk a little bit and then I'll wrap it up and uh, then we can take your questions. So, uh, Director Harris, uh, are you, there you are, okay. A lot of boxes on the screen, there he is. Uh, so if you could uh, talk about a couple of the capital projects, I would appreciate that. Sure, uh, thank you, Manager Knighton. Uh, Council, uh, Jay Harris, your Public Works Director. So uh, some of the projects, a lot of these you've already heard about, but let me just go over them real quick again, especially the larger ones. Um, so Western Gateway is our big street project for 2022. Uh, we have um, the state paying for some of the overlay costs. They're also paying for some of the uh, sidewalk and curb costs uh, via grants. Uh, the project will go from about 8th uh, Street all the way up to Pacific Court, so it's a quite lengthy project. Uh, we're in the uh, final design phase. Uh, our uh, city engineer later tonight uh, has a resolution for you to consider uh, to complete the design services. You'll hear a little bit more about it. You heard some of that last meeting, a little more later on that. Uh, that'll be a great project. Uh, the ARPA dollars, uh, we're using those for the uh, waterline extension, and uh, that will really help get the project done. That's really what we needed to complete it. The grants were secured some year ago, years ago from the state, and uh, now we're able to get the waterline done and pave over the top of it, which I know in our last meeting last week, nobody likes to see a road dug up after it's paved. And so getting that waterline brand new in there is, is really important um, uh, to, to everybody here at the city. Uh, a couple other water projects, uh, the AMI project. I had a meeting with you some months ago, described that project. Um, that's really gonna help our maintenance guys uh, going to every meter every month to get a reading and then re-reads and all that. Uh, the utility billing folks will be able to get reads anytime they need them. And then the customers are gonna be, benefit greatly from that project also that they'll be able to get online once, once we're fully functional and uh, uh, get hourly readings and uh, see what kind of water consumption they're doing. Uh, a big water project, uh, in addition to the Western Gateway water line, will be the Well One to High School tank water line project. That's been in the planning for some time now. Uh, final design plans are going to be in here next month. Uh, staff's going to check through them. We should be going to bid in December and uh, get a lot of these projects bid this winter, hopefully get a little bit better pricing. Uh, one concern on that project is uh, high density polyethylene thermally fused pipe. And the availability of that pipe is a little bit of a concern right now uh, as are all materials. Uh, so we're doing a lot of checking on our materials and then we gotta revise our contracts a little bit to allow some materials lead time uh, for some of the contractors um, to get materials. Uh, on the sewer side of things, uh, the reclaimed tank 
is the largest project uh, we'll be working on next year. And um, we'll get uh, the design going, probably have a bid to construct late in the year. And what that will allow us to do is to store water at the membrane plant and uh, deliver it to uh, the, the state prison. And then also what they don't use We'll be able to hold and um, put water out into the spray field a little more regularly um, rather than the, when we're just running the plant. Um, and uh, that'll be a great project for the reclaimed water system as we build that system and, and perhaps add uh, customers in the future. We got some small lining projects for uh, I and I reduction in the, the sewer budget also, which is really important. Those are very proactive projects to save water uh, that we have to uh, pipe and, and treat uh, down at the plants. Uh, the Civic Center parking lots, one of the storm drainage project, little tiny project, but there are some storm funds going to the alley improvements uh, for that lot. Uh, Western Gateway, as I spoke, also has some storm drainage funds going into it. Um, our EM&R equipment maintenance and rental fund, uh, we're buying a brush cutter for the excavator. That will allow us to take this uh, rubber tired X or rubber tracked excavator down into areas that are very hard to access or up areas and be able to, uh, to clean brush out and steep right away areas and that sort of thing. Um, we're uh, purchasing a new dump truck. Our dump trucks are very, very old. And um, that's one of the largest uh, EMR purchase next year is to get a new dump truck online, which will help us. We use these trucks for all sorts of things. The biggest one is snow removal though. It will give us a very reliable truck uh, to get out onto the streets. Uh, probably won't be here until the winter uh, uh, a year from now, right? Um, it takes some time to order these or on back order. Uh, we're getting a fuel trailer in EM&R too. Not a very big purchase, it's $15,000, but that fuel trailer in emergency will allow us to move fuel uh, from uh, site to site to fill up generators when we gotta run for days. Um, we have some tanks at the yard. Um, we'll be able to move fuel around much more efficiently um, within public works uh, during, during a large emergency. And then the last thing uh, to talk about is a couple of the paving projects. So we have, uh, we're planning to do a Brockdale Road yet, uh, next year using federal STIP funds. Uh, we're working with the county on acquiring those funds and with the state, uh, there's a bunch of processes we have to go through with the state and uh, our city engineer will be talking to you, your next council meeting about some of those processes. The other real big street project other than Western Gateway is the Safe Routes to School grant, um, almost three quarters of a million dollars for flashing beacons, sidewalk improvements, ADA ramps. And so uh, we really did well uh, gathering state funds and leveraging um, our TVD funds and other funds to really maximize the dollars and get a lot of projects out to the community uh, next uh, next year 2022 uh and i'm open to any questions I believe, uh, director director ziegler had uh, a few items to talk about on the parks end and then i'll wrap up uh once director ziegler's done thank you manager knight i'll start with our facilities capital plan uh, really trying to identify uh equipment um, and structures that are starting to age out and get ahead of uh, catastrophic or failures that uh, might affect operations down the road. Um, so we've got the uninterrupted power supply system here at the Civic Center that provides power in the event of a um, power loss before the generators kick on, battery backup system uh, that is critical, particularly for our MACECOM, our 911 operation center. Uh, the furnaces at the William G. Reed Library, replacing both of those that are, oh, about 17 years old. And uh, currently uh, one is uh, failing essentially at this point. Um, and the other is not far behind it. And we uh, and our uh, digital controls don't work anymore as well. So no longer, um, uh, no longer um, uh, supported. Uh, um, uh, network connections so um, and software. So 
um, that would replace that as well. So we uh, are able to remotely control that, look at it from anywhere um, from a um, from a monitor and computer and be able to control these systems uh, remotely without making a, a special trip to the library. Uh, uninterrupted power supply batteries at the fire station, those are aging out, so they need to be replaced. Um, just the batteries themselves, the, the um, unit itself is still in working condition. And then uh, some identification signs, uh, like at the library, William G. Reed Library sign, you see there at 7th and Alder, uh, replacing that. And then um, a um, remote access system. So going to a keyless entry in a lot of our buildings. Uh, we'll be facilitating that in 2022. Uh, it will increase security. Um, we don't have the possibility of lost keys and having to go through rekeying buildings. We can simply deactivate a, a key card uh, remotely if uh, one is lost or um, somebody leaves employment at the city of Shelton and we really manage, um, manage secure accesses throughout all of our buildings, um, including the civic center, treatment plants, public works um, facilities as well. So it will be a, um, an upgrade that was actually planned for the Civic Center. We have some infrastructure in place uh, near our doors. So that was planned when the building was, uh, was constructed. So that'll, that'll help us out here uh, in the coming year when that project is kicked off. Um, as far as parks, uh, looking at replacing a 1996 uh, pickup with a new pickup, uh, a new mower uh, that would replace uh, our existing uh, turf mower. Uh, this is kind of different than uh, what Director Harris was talking about. This is more of a finish mower for uh, grass fields, ball fields, athletic fields, and things like that. Um, some new signs, much like the library, to identify Neyland Park, Callanan Park, Loop Field, and some of our other recreational facilities, bring more attention to them, uh, liven up the uh, entrance. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. The loop field parcel acquisition, we're actually taking off the budget for the uh, 2022. It was on in 2021. Uh, property owner, um, just we haven't come to an agreement at this point, so it's more appropriate to take that off the list. Um, some work on Northcliffe Neighborhood Park, which is adjacent to Terrace Heights, uh, establishing uh, a neighborhood park in that area. We've recently done some survey work to establish park boundaries and We'll start working on uh, that project next year as well to bring some more amenities to that neighborhood. And uh, the Simpson Railroad Master Plan. So master plan for a multimodal trail and the um, associated amenities that would, uh, that would convert the existing railroad from essentially First Street out to Highway 101 to a uh, public amenity. Uh, so we'll um, plan on um, starting our pre-design in 2022. Thank you, Mark. Jeff? And then uh, just to wrap, uh, wrap all this up, quite a bit of information, uh, and we're happy to answer any questions. I did want to point out uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, Council Member Anisco did mention, uh, noticed an error on one of our pages, and we are uh, fixing that. Page five uh, had an expenditure of 776000 and that was because uh, in the tables on the spreadsheet, the lines bumped down to where they ought not to be. So that was an error. It didn't affect the overall bottom line, but we want to make sure we relay information accurately. Uh, so we will be fixing that. The actual expenditure is 71,000, so uh, a little over 71,000. So that's, uh, that'll be a bit of a change. But that's uh, just a point to highlight the overall message that the structure of this budget uh, will remain the same for your November 16th meeting, depending on council desires and which directions they would like to go. Uh, but there are going to be some changes before your November 16th meeting and potentially the uh, December 7th meeting. Um, the moving target, we're trying to get everything in place uh, and we wanna make sure we represent your directions accurately. So there will be some changes whatever changes there are will be highlighted for you so that you have the appropriate uh, amount of time to review that before you come to a final vote. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have or any of our uh, department heads uh, can try to answer those questions as well. I don't see any hands. 
So I guess we'll move on. All right, Donna, has anyone signed up for public testimony? Let's take a look here. No, there isn't anyone signed up, Mr. Mayor. All right, could you give me the first reading of ordinance number 1979-1021? Ordinance number 1979-1021, an ordinance of the city of Shelton, Washington, adopting the budget for the calendar year 2022. All right, thank you. Do we have a motion, please? I move to forward the 2022 annual budget to the November 16th council meeting for the second public hearing to allow the public another opportunity to be heard on the budget under consideration. Second. All right. Do we still not have any questions for Jay or Mark or Jeff? All right. We have a motion and a second to forward the 2022 annual budget to, to the November 16th council meeting for the second public hearing to allow the public another opportunity to be heard on the budget under consideration. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. This public hearing is now closed and we're gonna resume our regular meeting. Next business item is an ordinance regarding homeless encampments. City Manager Jeff Knighton has more information for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of council. Uh, we brought this item to you uh, in a study session a couple of weeks ago, and we incorporated several of your suggestions. We appreciate uh, that feedback. Over the last several years, uh, there has been a perceived number of uh, increased number of unsheltered individuals in our downtown area and around our community in general. And we wanted to design an ordinance that approaches this issue in a compassionate way uh, first and foremost, uh, but also addresses uh, the needs of the community and uh, things that we have heard talking with our business owners, people living in downtown. Uh, we've identified a partial solution, potential uh, solution. Uh, we do have shelter sp uh, space available uh, in downtown, uh, and we want to make sure we are effectively using that shelter space to address the needs of the, uh, the unhoused in our community. Uh, we also want to make sure that we uh, utilize uh, and especially recognize the investment that our partners at Mason County have made in the uh, shelter in our downtown area and uh, use those resources in our community uh, as effectively as we can. So what this ordinance does uh, is it clearly defines what public camping is. Uh, and it provides for an employee of the city, uh, and it's typically will be a police officer, a code enforcement officer, but it doesn't have to be, uh, making contact with an unsheltered individual and just advising them of the resources that are available. Uh, and that public uh, camping on publicly owned property uh, is prohibited, uh, but these are the resources that are available to you. Uh, let us make sure that, uh, or let us help you uh, um, engage with those resources. Uh, that's the intent of the ordinance. There is a penalty phase uh, written into the ordinance, uh, but that is not our first intent. Uh, that is only to make sure uh, that uh, we can enforce the no public camping rule. Um, uh, our first intent is to connect these individuals with resources. Uh, there have been a couple of public comments uh, on this, uh, several emails, uh, one that I forwarded you this afternoon uh, from Mr. Loomis with a couple of suggestions. I think you've all seen those. Uh, and uh, there was a comment uh, emailed uh, a few days ago, and I'm, I apologize, I don't remember the exact day, but I forwarded that to council as well uh, from uh, uh, Barbara Wiesa. Uh, with some suggestions to the ordinance. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, and thank you. All right. Megan? Hey, Jeff. Uh, does, the, uh, does Mason County currently have a home fund tax? I am not sure. I, as you... Uh, heard a little bit earlier, we've been working on our own, uh, our own budget, but right. I can certainly, can certainly look into that, but I'm not sure what all their revenue sources are. 
Okay. Um, I think that's something that we need to take a look at. Um, if the county is currently collecting a home fund tax, then we need to have some conversations with them about um, disbursement to our municipality. And then um, if they're not, then I think that we really need to um, do some homework and some work study on what that means for um, how we come up with solutions for this for the future. We know what our budget outlook looks like for general fund. Um, and I think that we really need to be thoughtful about planning for the future on this. Um, I, and, and, you know, we, again, we, we just looked at all of our funds, you know, we, we know exact, exactly where we're at with shoring up our infrastructure. We know that we're on the long game short on that too. So if we're going to come up with solutions, then we need to figure out um, how we're going to pay for it. And my recommendation is as staff is taking a look at you know, what a home fund tax does, how much we might be able to collect on that, um, if it's a, 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 like attached to a sales tax type situation, which again, there needs to be lots of analysis there. Um, you know, how do, we, how do we also establish it as an economic development driver um, so that there are certain things in, in the programming um, that's funded like, uh, short-term training cohorts that might be developed through a maker space, something like that, where if we're providing um, mitigation sites for homeless folks in transitional housing, that there's requirements for them to be, you know, going through short-term training, you know, either learning how to, you know, get their skills sharpened up for um, demand occupations here locally and, and or getting into a situation where they can be entrepreneurs, help rebuild our main street. So that's, that's, that's my questions and wonderings. And then I really would like to see the data around, um, I know that we're not capacity with all of our shelter situations, our behavioral health hospital situation. Um, and I really wanna see that data. I wanna see how, what our bed counts are. I wanna see how many folks we've got in daily, weekly, monthly. And I wanna see like what the return on investment is happening in this community for bundled services. Cause this siloed approach to how we serve our community isn't working. So I'd really like to see what this network is doing to, and, 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 if, and if we're seeking opportunity and future funding as a council, I, I need to see what the asset map looks like and what funds are already being expended um, so that we can fully support a, a strategic plan for the community. Anyone else? If not, we'll move on to public comments. From Donna, do we have any? Let me look here, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm expecting that there should be, but I don't see anyone with their hand raised via Zoom or, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. There is no public comment, Mr. Mayor. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, oh, here we are. Wendy Petty? Yes. yes. Wendy. Um, so, Wendy, you have three minutes to give your comment to council. All right. And for the, for the record, my name is Wendy Petty. I live in Mason County, but operate a business inside the city of Shelton. Um, I, I'm really here tonight to continue sharing with each of you my thoughts on the drafting of this ordinance to penalize homeless camping within the city. I wanted to thank Councilman Schmidt for making sure our group received a copy of the ordinance and for allowing us to provide a recommendation on an amendment. Uh, our recommendation was minimal and I trust that it was shared. I want to be sure that it's stated that Crazy Love Ministries does not support the homeless camping around town 
nor does it support individuals who are defiant and complying with our local laws. Everyone we service is fully aware of this and we place huge emphasis on being respectful citizens and on different ways that we can all work towards being assets in our greater community. Despite our being in agreement uh, for the reasons that, that this ordinance is being considered, Crazy Love will continue to make pleas to the city on behalf of those that we service that you please hold off on instating any ordinances that allow for misdemeanor charges against our homeless until adequate expansion of shelter options have been made attainable to them. I personally don't think penalizing our homeless is gonna motivate them whatsoever. The majority of them are broken down so severely, they're probably gonna care less. What they need are more places to go during the night hours. Even if Community Lifeline does pass inspections to qualify to upgrade to 50 beds, this is still not nearly enough to accommodate our current homeless population. In addition, the sleeping accommodations a community lifeline are set up to serve a short-term need. We can only put people into groups like this for so long before someone's in a bad mood or someone has a mental health outburst, which then causes disturbance for everyone. Some of these types of disturbances are what oftentimes are causing people to not want to return or to not be allowed to return. Our group and our associates want to coordinate future discussions with our city, county leaders, other state and local nonprofits to discuss what is working in other areas when it comes to individual dwelling units. This style of living with a proper governance provides people a better sense of stability, not to mention the personal space and privacy that everyone needs. While case managers and peer counselors can then continue working with people towards their full independence. Those battling mental health will be less likely to cause uh, someone else's regression when people have outbursts um, because people will be able to retreat to personal designated spaces. And they- this is Wendy. Yes. That is, that is your three minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> All right. Anyone else, Don? Let me check. I don't see anyone else, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So at this time, I'd like to ask for a reading of ordinance number 1977-0921. Ordinance number 1977-0921, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, enacting a new chapter 8.74 of the Shelton Municipal Code relating to public camping and homeless encampments. Did we get a second? You just had a first reading, Mayor. Need a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'll move to I'll move that ordinance number 1977-0921 before to the action agenda uh, for November 2nd, 2021. I'll second it. All right. Now do we have any questions? Comment. Comments. Go ahead. First, Joe. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you very much to uh, receive feedback from a few of our nonprofits uh, that are um, on the front lines of the homeless crisis on a daily basis. And, and again, that is that's exactly why we do what we do. Um, initially, there was apparent there was a, some misinformation posted in the uh, in local media about what we were up to. And we are absolutely not criminalizing homelessness. Uh, matter of fact, we're kind of doing just the opposite in our current city ordinance as written is not constitutional. So we are simply changing our city ordinance to become constitutional. That said, unenforceable until we have some sort of permanent housing supportive service in the community that we can send people to. Uh, so I empathize with the comments that were brought up this evening and I appreciate the interaction. That's that's how this uh, problems like this get, get solved or at least uh, the foundational components of which start to get solved, right? Uh, 
lot of lot more conversation. Uh, this is, and I, I just want to be clear, this is not, at least in my opinion, uh, this is not a part of the necessarily the homeless housing, uh, you know, um, solution uh, per se, but this is part of uh, the, you know, those initial steps that we need to take. And again, uh, crimes are crimes and the city should be postured in a way to deal with that and to hold people accountable for their actions. And again, I, I fully agree uh, with the sentiments and comments that were made this evening. Um, and uh, I believe, and to speak for some of the other council members as well, I believe we are fully committed to working on this issue and making uh, strides here in the near future um, with, with actual actionable projects and things like that. So we appreciate this and um, invite uh, those who spoke out this evening to continue to to hang with us as we move along. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate your comments. Eric? I've been thinking about this a lot. I mean, I think I even had a dream about it. And I agree, something needs to be done. I think we're jumping the gun on making these misdemeanors. Um, we, we need to think about, you know, or a court prosecutor or public defenders. We need to think about the people involved. Do they really have a place to go? Are they really welcome at one of the shelters? Are there, are there beds available? I think that we're really jumping the gun. And I'd like to table this until and put together a panel of council members, county commissioners, health departments, police, fire, citizens, local stakeholders, um, and our prosecutors, of course, that are public defenders. Um, and, and really sit down at a table and, and see if we can figure this out. I, I just really think that we, we jumped the gun on this and I would like to study it more. With that being said, I'm done. Okay, thank you, Eric. I don't know who was first, Megan or James. So go ahead, Megan. James is actually first, so he should go. Sure. Mine's quick and easy. I, I, I fully support this. That's all I have to say. Are we losing? Well, I support this, Mayor. Um, I am with Eric. I think that um, we need to see the exact data. I think that we need to be fully, fully informed on um, what the activity is, how our nonprofits are interacting and serving our community. Um, I think we need to understand um, what our gaps are in supporting that as a city. I think we need to understand um, what um, it's going to take to put a home fund together. Um, and I don't think that we should be prosecuting folks for homelessness now. I do think that there's a way forward with this ordinance. Is there an opportunity for us to adjust that language, put an ordinance forward, though, and continue to move this forward through a, um, uh, a Shelton um, Houseless Task Force. Um, you know, and, and we, there's gotta be some silos broken down between the partners that are delivering these services and the understanding of how we work together. So, um, it's hard, it's a hard one, you know? And uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm curious, I mean, Deidre, what do you think? You know, from, from uh, our downtown community or, you know, we've heard some from, from some of our businesses already, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't think this is an answer. Um, this is one piece of the conversation, certainly. And to Council Member Schmidt's point, I think that this is, in my mind, a first step in housekeeping to make sure that the ordinances and the codes and the laws that we have on the books are defensible and are right. Um, there's nothing in this that says we must um, take these penalties out on folks. Um, I have an incredible confidence in our law enforcement staff led by Chief Beeson that there will be um, an, a compassion applied with this. And I do think that this, to Eric's point, speaks to a much larger conversation. And a lot of those conversations are taking place 
But as has been noted by many people in this room tonight, um, there's lots of conversations happening in lots of places, but there isn't a single movement forward to work towards a, a solution that everyone's in the same boat rowing in the same direction. So one of the things that I think we need to take a look at is we've heard from our city law uh, enforcement officers. We've heard from our downtown, not only businesses, but um, neighbors. And I'm sure that Councilman McDowell will speak to this as well. No one wants to put someone in a position where they don't feel safe. And that goes for our unhoused folks, as well as people who are trying to take care of their day-to-day -day business. And, you know, quite frankly, up until this point, we've just said, well, there's nothing we can do about it. And that's not necessarily the case. So, you know, this to me is step one. If we're going to expect certain behavior, we need to clarify that and make that very clear. Um, but I don't think that in my mind, you know, I don't think the intent of this from council is to start to um, charge folks or to penalize them for the fact that they are homeless, but instead to provide a, a means to have those conversations about navigating resources. And I do agree that this is a part of a much larger conversation. I'm glad to see that our community, some of our community partners um, are on the line tonight because this is something that has drastically affected our community and a lot of communities. And we need to be working towards um, some thoughtful, creative solutions because there's not a magic wand to wave over this. Um, I have had comments from folks who have businesses in the downtown core that we shouldn't be not charging someone for a fine or a penalty if they're having bad behavior, that laws should be applying to everyone, whether, I mean, and that's the one kind of opposite end of the spectrum that I've heard out of this conversation. But I don't even think in my mind, that's really the question we're looking at here. So I appreciate the continued conversations with our partners. If there are tweaks we need to make to the language, um, I'm open to that. But I do think it's important that we have on the books um, what is defensible, what is lawful, and is clarifying the expectations of behavior within our community. And Mr. Mayor, if I can add just real quick as a point of clarity. Uh, we will check if shelter beds are available. If there are no beds available, then we cannot enforce any criminal penalties. Uh, that is, um, we can't uh, under uh, the Boise decision and many others. Uh, and we will check um, uh, shelter capacity uh, at the beginning of each uh, beginning of each shift. Um, and I also saw a, uh, a note or a suggestion that we can check it for that particular violator. Uh, and that's something that we can certainly look into if we have the capacity to do that. Uh, but just to be clear, we cannot enforce any criminal penalties or any penalties if there are no uh, shelter beds available. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you, Jeff. I just wanted to add too that uh, to some of Joe's point, and Deidre's point that there needs to be compassion in this and and maybe even above all legality. And um, um, Deidre mentioned that as well. And also um, I, I witnessed this firsthand just the other day. Um, Chief Carol Beeson was walking back to her office from a coffee shop and there's a man laying on the sidewalk and she got right down and talked to him compassionately, offered different things and helped him sit up. And so I just, I just wanted to share that. It, I just kind of want to reiterate, remind, I guess, is a city ordinance, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, at, at any time, if the council decides we need to make a change to a city ordinance, a majority vote of the council would ratify that and an ordinance could be changed. So in the future, as we progress through planning and other discussions and as data is gathered, uh, we still have opportunities to refine our, you know, and codify different 
avenues related to this effort. And um, there's there's a lot of discussion. Um, I'm like the rest of you, I'm, I'm ready and waiting uh, to start on that. Uh, I don't see a need to delay. Um, and so whenever, whenever that uh, opportunity arises, I look forward to it. So I hope uh, we can keep continuing this and again, making, uh, making some significant strides in the, in the short term. And Mr. Mayor, just as a matter of procedure, uh, every council member has the opportunity to speak once uh, after the votes on the floor. Um, and so if there's more discussion about that, this, we can certainly have that. Uh, but once the motions on the floor, uh, a vote needs to happen after each council member has had the opportunity to speak. All right. Is everybody, oh, Kathy hasn't spoke yet. Yeah, I um, had a little experience today walking down on uh, Second Street uh, past a building where an um, individual was curled up uh, with his blanket and was sleeping. And um, I could have gotten angry with him and told him to get out of there. That that's, but um, he looked up at me, and I just I just stopped and said hi to him. And he said thank you very much. There's not very many people that say hi to me. So the compassion we have to have compassion at the top of this list on whatever we. Uh, come up with. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So, oh, Eric, did you speak yet? Uh, I did. I did speak. But before we uh, we vote, I, I would like to see if I can make a motion to amend to remove the the penalties, criminal penalties, and make them civil penalties rather than criminal at this time. Because I think we're jumping the gun. All right. So, do we have a motion? That's. Oh, a, I think that's I made a, one. That's a request to amend. Oh, uh, yeah. So we would need another council member to second that request to amend, and then okay. vote on the overall motion. I do we have a second? That. Kathy has a second. All right. We have a motion and a second to. Uh, re what was it again? Remove what? Re remove it as misdemeanors and put it back to civil penalties, financial. All right, to remove civil penalties and put it back, um, misdemeanors and put it to civil. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Aye. No. All right, the motion did not carry. So we go back to the original motion. We have a motion and a second to forward the Ordinance number 1977-0921 to the action agenda for November 2nd, 2021. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Two opposed? Okay. So motion carries. Thank you very much, guys. All right. We have another item from Jeff, a prosecution services contract. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of council. Uh, City Council has uh, uh, spoken to staff and has made it clear through their strategic goals that uh, code enforcement is one of their priorities. Uh, with the new uh, prosecution services contract that is before you for consideration this evening, we wanted to ensure that the individual that was uh, submitting for this contract was uh, well-versed in code enforcement pr procedure, particularly in Washington state, and was familiar with how to handle those procedures. Uh, the uh, Young Love and Coker uh, was, uh, one of the, uh, was the respondent to our request for proposals uh, very experienced uh, prosecuting all types of municipal cases, in, including code enforcement, which is uh, something that we weighted heavily in the RFP. Uh, the contract is attached to your briefing sheet, and I would be happy to answer any questions. All right. <clears throat> Do we have any public comments, Donna? Let me take a look, Mr. Mayor. No, we don't. 
All right. Do we have a motion to push uh, move this forward? I move that this agreement be forwarded to the action agenda for November 2nd, 2021. Second. Okay. Still no questions or comments for Jeff? I have one Go question. Ahead. I apologize, Jeff, um, for putting you on the spot for a random uh, statistic, but uh, I recall when we started talking about this a year or so ago, you had a statistic of total number of crimes that were ultimately prosecuted in the city. And it was a very low number, which is also part of the reason why we're entertaining this change. Um, do you recall what that number was versus the total number of crimes that you know were arrested, were arrestable offenses, that sort of thing? I, I remember discussing uh, that statistic. I do not remember the exact number, but I can and will provide that for you uh, tomorrow. Um, it won't be difficult to find. I just don't have it in front of me right now. Sorry about that. Yeah, it would be. I think it would be helpful for the action portion when we get to the next meeting. So thank I you. Will, I will make sure council has that information. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to forward this agreement to the action agenda for, for November 2nd, 2021. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we have a lot to cover tonight, don't we? Our last business item is the cancellation of WSP's latecomers agreement. Jeff has the details for us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I appreciate our city clerk, uh, uh, Donna Nault, putting this last on the business agenda anyway, because it is uh, the absolute best piece of information uh, that I can provide to you this evening. Uh, as council knows, we have been working with our legislative delegation and members of the governor's office uh, for several years now in order to address the issues that are compounded by the, uh, the latecomers agreement with our partners at the Washington State Patrol and their academy. Uh, we are grateful that the academy is here. Uh, that, uh, that brings in uh, quite a few people into our community. Uh, but there was the question of the $2.7 million dollars uh, that were attached to parcels in between um, Walmart and the Fred Myers uh, area right down there south of the port and the uh, State Patrol Academy with uh, this agreement. And we did uh, get the language in the proviso. The governor's office uh, worked with us very closely to get that language in the transportation bill. Um, and uh, it was approved and was signed by the governor, a big accomplishment for us. Uh, and uh, this agreement is the actual mechanism by which the, uh, the latecomers agreement will be canceled. Um, it's really, it, it's not a formality, but it is uh, the mechanism that we'll take to the county and those attached parcels that are affected by the old latecomers agreement and get all of that stuff gone. Uh, and I think it'll make uh, economic development in our community, especially the Northern part of, uh, of the city, um, move more quickly than it might have otherwise. Uh, with that, the agreement and the proviso language uh, that was in the adopted transportation budget at the state level is included in your packet and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank our delegation and the governor's office for making this happen. It made available land that wasn't affordable, now affordable and available. So hopefully we get some development up there. Here, here. Still remember two or three years ago when we were establishing legislative priorities and, you know, we're usually focused on infrastructure projects. And this was one of those ones where, hey, let's throw it out there and let's see what can happen and struck out the first year, but not to anyone's fault and came back the next year and made it happen. And Jeff, appreciate you sticking through that and uh, appreciate uh Mr. Uh, Troy Nichols and uh, to echo council member Onisco's thanks to the 35th district delegation um, for also assisting us with this. This is a huge win for the city and the urban growth area and the economic opportunity zone in that area. So hopefully uh, we start to see some, some movement. So thank you. Yeah, I wanna shout out a big thanks to Jeff for working on that for a couple of years. Did a good job. All right. 
Any comment, Donna? Let's see here. No public comment, Mr. Mayor. All right, how about a motion? I move that this agreement be forwarded to the action agenda for November 2nd, 2021. Second. All right, any more questions for Jeff? All right, we have a motion and a second to forward this agreement to the action agenda for November 2nd, 2021. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. We're going to recess from our regular meeting to open a public hearing. Public Works Director Jay Harris has information for us about a resolution for utility property surplus. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor oh. if I may, you yes. skipped over action item number one. Did I miss one? Yeah, oh. there's there's one. Sorry. More. There's one like... More. There's Thanks 50 for tonight. me out again. It's a busy agenda tonight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, forget what I just said. Let's go back. Our first action item is the Western Gateway Design Contract Amendment. City Engineer Ken Gill is here to share some information with us. Hi, Ken. Hey, Mayor Dorsey. I forgive you. That's okay. Thank you. Know, you. Harris already talked about it tonight. You know, we've already done yeah, with right. that. I totally get it. So, um, what is here in front of you tonight is a repeat of what I presented to you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a 100K contract to finish the design and get us out to bid just before Martin Luther King Day next year. So uh, today on the way in this morning, I saw the crews uh, blowing leaves by the tracks. Uh, one of the cost savings things that we've talked about internally is uh, as part of the construction contract, our crews do the, the, the labor to remove those tracks instead of our contractor. So um, I recommend that you uh, adopt this uh, resolution and move us closer to construction. That's all I have tonight. Um, and uh, I also want to do a kind of a, a quick shout out, big thank you um, to uh, the folks, all the folks that helped us uh, with our chip seal project that turned out great on North 13th. And also a big help, big th thank you to uh, the folks that helped out with Park Street and 14th. So those uh, completed our paving projects for the year, just in the nick of time before it starts to rain. So. All right, thank you. Public comments, Donna? Let me see. No, there isn't, Mr. Mayor. Okay, can you give me a reading of resolution number 1208-0921? Yes, resolution number 1208-0921, a resolution of the Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, authorizing the city manager to approve supplemental agreement number three to the professional services agreement with Gray and Osborne Incorporated titled Access Shelton Phase 4, West Downtown, Western Gateway. All right, thank you. Do you have a motion, please? I move to adopt resolution number 1208-0921 and the Western Gateway Design Contract Amendment number three. Second. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 1208-0921 and the Western Gateway Design Contract Amendment number three. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. All right, let's go back thank to- you. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna recess from our regular meeting to open a public hearing. Public Works Director Jay Harris has information for us about a resolution for utility property surplus. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council, Jay Harris, your Public Works Director again. Uh, so I have a resolution for the surplus of uh, city-owned property. Uh, I presented it at the, the last meeting, October 5th to you folks. 
Uh, we own seven properties that are no longer uh, seven properties that are no longer needed uh, for our city operations. Uh, four are on Harvard Street, two are on Thirteenth, and then one is on Front Street next to Builders Supply. Um, we're looking to declare those properties as surplus. Uh, we'll uh, go and get appraisals. Uh, we will market the properties and then uh, come back to you with any sales contracts or purchase agreements um, that uh, come out of uh, us marketing the properties. Uh, there's been no revisions to the resolution since I spoke to you last and uh, I'm available for questions. All right, any comments for Jay? All right, has anyone signed up for public testimony, Donna? No, there's no one signed up, Mr. Mayor. All right. Would you give us a reading of resolution number 1209-1021? Yes. Resolution number 1209-1021, a resolution of the Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, declaring multiple city properties as surplus and authorizing the city manager to commence the process to sell the real properties. Do we have a motion? I move to adopt resolution number 1209-1021, a resolution declaring multiple city properties as surplus and authorizing the city manager to commence the process to sell the real properties. Second. Any, any, anything for Jay at all? Any questions? All right, we have a motion and a second to resolution number 1209-1021, a resolution declaring multiple city properties as surplus and authorizing the city manager to commence the process to sell the real properties. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The public hearing is now closed and we'll reopen our regular meeting. Our next action item is a resolution for SPD body worn cameras. Police Chief Carol Beeson has information for us. Hi, hey, Carol. Good evening, Mayor Dorsey, Deputy Mayor Peterson, and members of council. Uh, as we discussed once before, uh, the Shelton Police Department utilizes body worn cameras and in-car cameras in order to keep our community safe and uh, be transparent in our transactions with the community. The current cameras that we have uh, been, they are no longer in production. When they break, we have no means of getting them replaced at this point. So we'd like to purchase new ones. Um, part of the funding can be using the American Recovery Act monies. So we'd like uh, council to approve the purchase of new body-worn cameras and dash camps for the police department. Okay. Any public comment, Donna? No public comment, Mr. Mayor. All right. Would you please give us a reading of resolution number 1210-1021? Resolution number 1210-1021 a resolution of the Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, authorizing the city manager to sign purchase orders for the acquisition of body-worn cameras. Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion, please? I move to approve resolution number 1210-1021 as presented. I'll second it. Thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> Any questions or comments for Carol? Eric has one. I, I just want to say to the council that I've been for this from day one, but I was down at my marina in Olympia, Washington, um, working on my sailboat, and I walked, met a gentleman, and we were having a discussion, and he, and it came out I was city council, and he told me that he was the salesman for these cameras. I just wanted to let you guys know that I, there was about a 30 second conversation. I said, we don't need, we can't talk about this anymore. So, but I was for him before I met him. And I just want to let everybody know that in case it ever came up, but it was like a 30 second. He says, Oh, I'm your salesman. I said, Oh, we're done. 
<laughs> well, thanks so. for full disclosure, Eric. And uh, I hope he didn't scare him off. <laughs> no, right. we talked about boats after that, but. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 1210-1021 as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. All right. Looks like Jeff's up again. We're keeping him busy tonight. <laughs> information for us regarding an AV system replacement. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of council. Uh, we presented the uh, uh, the new JAV system, the Justice Audiovisual System at your uh, last meeting. Uh, the system is 16 years old. Uh, it is failing and uh, uh, as my dad would say, it's held together with bubble gum and bailing wire. Um, so this is uh, the new system uh, presented for you. It is will work with all the Mason County courts and will provide HD video. Uh, for our, uh, our judge and uh, the representing attorneys to facilitate those hearings. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Oh, nothing has changed since the first time that you heard this item and happy to answer any questions. All right. Do we have a public comment, Donna? No public comment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, could you give us a reading please of resolution number 1211-1021. Resolution number 1211-1021, a resolution of the Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, authorizing the city manager to purchase, to sign purchase orders for the acquisition of audiovisual equipment. Okay, do we have a motion please? I move to approve resolution number 1211-1021 as presented. All right, thank you. Thank you. Joe has a second. All right. Questions? All right. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 1211-1021 as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Let's on. We got one more item for Jeff. He has information for us regarding grant recommendations from the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and members of Council. Uh, the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee, or LTAC, uh, had met earlier this year and provided the recommendations that you see on your report. Uh, there was some question uh, about whether Council could modify those recommendations. Uh, we looked into that and provided council with the information on how that process would work. Uh, council can modify the recommendations, but we need to provide uh, the LTAC, um, LTAC committee, it sounds kind of redundant, but uh, the LTAC group um, uh, an opportunity to comment on those modifications. Uh, nothing has changed since the first time you heard this item and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Jeff? All right. <clears throat> I would like to consider uh, bringing this back to the committee because of a misinterpretation of the RCW, which is limiting the full grant award for certain uh, for certain events that were listed here. Further, I'll ask that in, th in this particular case, this is one of those particular taxes that is designed to go right back out. It, it is a protected fund. It cannot really be used for anything else. Um, mm -hmm. Other than tourism related events, um, I think it behooves us to keep that money circulating in the community, especially in the economic climate that we're in. Um, it really serves no purpose for us to continue to bank that capacity once we've met our council goals of, uh, of, of our fund balance uh, and fund balance needs. So I would just ask the council consider that and, uh, and take that back to the committee for clarification. All right. Hey, I'm going to excuse myself for the remainder of this conversation. Oh. And through oh, the that's right. Sorry, I was looking for an opening there. And Jeff, if you will please just let me know when folks are done, and I will rejoin the group. Thank you, Nidra. Uh, if that was a motion, I would second that. Councilmember Schmidt. All right. All right. 
Um, let's, uh, okay, so we have a motion. Do we have it? You have the second. And um, if uh, Mr. Mayor, if it could, if uh, Council Member Schmidt could restate uh, his okay. statement in the form of a motion, uh, if that's what he so chooses, that would be great. All right. Uh, I guess I will move to amend, or excuse me, I, I will move to uh, take the uh, recommendation from the LTAC committee back to the LTAC committee to request uh, the full uh, dissemination of the funds in accordance with the RCW. Second. That makes sense. Okay. We have a, uh, we have a motion and a second. To I'm going to say this, we have a motion. How do we do that? I think uh, Mr. It was Mayor, presented. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we have a motion and a second to uh, ask the LTAC to reconsider uh, the award structure and amounts. Motion and a second to ask the LTAC committee to reconsider. Reconsider the uh, the amounts all right and we had a second okay so any other questions about it all right you can okay all in favor say aye aye okay opposed no um, excuse me motion carries thank you all right so um, our last action item is a resolution for an agreement with the Kitsap Humane Society. Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes. Let me ask the Deputy Mayor to come yeah. back. Oh, I missed one again, didn't I? No, you didn't. We no. just need to wait for Deputy Mayor Peterson to come back oh, before okay. we move on. We're all going to be ready for bed when this is over. This is a lot tonight. <laughs> makes up for the short ones. Wait a minute. Hey, didn't we miss one? Yes, the FCS group. The number FCS six? contract is the next one, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Item number yeah. six, once yeah. Deputy Mayor returns. Do you see it there? Yeah, I see it. Okay. There we go. There. Okay. We're on. Um, let me make one comment. If I can, still do it. Um, Jeff, I would like to have, when we reconsider, when the LTAC reconsiders, <coughs> I would like to have the RCW explain very well. Sure. Possible. Yeah, we can do okay. that. Because I know we're going to have some feedback. Okay, Interim Finance Director Terry Schnitzer has information about a contract with the FCS group. Thank you, council members. Um, Tonight, we're asking that council uh, approve a contract with FCS Group uh, who will help the city develop a master plan uh, to support the transition to an equipment rental and replacement fund from our equipment maintenance and repair fund. Um, this will help centralize all of the city vehicles and equipment. And there has not been any changes since the last uh, meeting to this contract. Do we have any public comment here, Donna? No public comment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, how about a motion? I move that we approve the FCS group contract as presented. Second. Second. Okay. Council members, have any questions or comments? Just thank you. Keep on keeping on that project. You know, it'll be really great when we have that asset management system. So thanks again for the consistency and the the trudging forward. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the FCS group contract as presented. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. 
All right, our last action item is a resolution for an agreement with the Kitsap Humane Society. Police Chief Carol Beeson has the detail. Good evening. Uh, as you all know, we have a, uh, an animal shelter here in the city of Shelton that is predominantly uh, run by our code compliance officer. Um, in cases where animals are abandoned or uh, picked up by officers without the owner being present, um, we're required to hold on to those animals for 72 hours for someone to claim them. And in the event that someone doesn't claim them, then we make arrangements to have that animal adopted or foster care or whatnot. Um, this arrangement tends to take a lot of our animal control officers time uh, when she is having animals in the, uh, in the pound. And what we are hoping to do is get into an arrangement with the Kitsap uh, Humane Society. So any animal that would be in our care longer than the 72 hours that we would be able to transfer that animal to their facility where they will work on getting that animal adopted. Um, the Kitsap Humane Society would charge us $200 for every dog that we transfer over there and $100 for every cat. Um, this would alleviate our code compliance officer having the long-term responsibility. In some cases, it takes several weeks in order to find a family to adopt or to turn that animal over to adopt a pet so that they can take on that adoption for us. Um, usually in the time that uh, I've been here, we average less than five animals a month that would meet this criteria. They're mostly dogs. Um, and our purpose for doing this would be so that um, animals that are picked up, they would be taken to our pound temporarily for that 72 hours. And then our uh, animal control slash code compliance officer would then transfer them to Kitsap for the adoption process. And they would in turn take care of that animal until a suitable family could be found. That way she would be more available to handle code compliance issues as they come up in the city. Um, that's uh, all the information I have for you. Do you have any questions for me at this time? Oh yeah, Deidre. I, I, just to clarify, it's my understanding that the reason we are not entering into a contract with the Mason County Humane Society is because they do not currently operate a facility and shelter, although that is part of their long-term goal. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. We have anybody for public comment, Donna? No public comment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, could you give us a reading of resolution number 1212-1021? Resolution number 1212-1021, a resolution of the Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Kitsap Humane Society for long-term animal care and adoption. All right. Mr. Mayor, if I may, before uh, before a motion is made, if as part of the motion, uh, it could be stated that uh, council has agreed to place this directly on the action agenda, just so we can follow through um, the, uh, the process line. I move to waive the three touch rule and to approve resolution number 1212-1021 as presented. Second. Right. We have a motion and a second um, for resolution number 1212-1021 as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> Back to Jeff. You give us your city manager report, please. I have a whole lot of things to talk about tonight. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to sit back then. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just a couple of things I wanted to mention. First, uh, people are downloading our app, which is great. But one of the things I wanted to share with council is that we received uh, two great compliments uh, on the app. I have them here. I don't want to read them, uh, read the entire things this evening, but I do have them here. Uh, very complimentary of our, uh, our, our team members here. Uh, promoting positivity, uh, and we have kind, hardworking, and amazing employees, and I absolutely agree with that. I think that's great. 
Uh, and the other one is uh, when they drive by, they almost always get a wave, which is also great. We want to make sure that we acknowledge uh, acknowledge the people that are here. Uh, it's a great part of the community, a great part of being part of the community. Um, let's see here. Uh, Callanan Park, there was a mention made of uh, perhaps installing a camera near the new Hope Garden uh, and uh, near the parking lot. Uh, we are planning to do that. We haven't done it yet. There's a lot of work going on there with uh, digging a new water ditch. But after all those improvements are complete, that uh, that trail cam will be installed. Uh, so just wanted to give you a quick update there. Wanted to invite uh, everyone. The Chamber of Commerce is hosting the State of the Community Address on Thursday. Uh, and the mayor and I will be participating in that. The mayor doing most of the talking, of course. Uh, but we have prepared a great presentation as part of that event and uh, looking forward to participating in that. Um, let's see here. Also on October 29th, uh, the chamber is hosting the spectacular event uh, for uh, kids to enjoy Halloween downtown. Hopefully it's dry, uh, but I don't think we can count on that unfortunately. Uh, but that event will be from uh, four to 6 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm really looking forward to that and uh, to our police department participating in that as well. Manager Knighton, I would be remiss if we didn't also give credit to Shelby Downtown Merchants. This has been a long-term partnership with, with them. And so we're excited to see like over 25 businesses, not all usually downtown, um, downtown for that event. And there are a number of other activities being hosted um, throughout the community. And there is a, a community-wide map put together for all those things. That's Thank you. Love all the sugar. That's going to be that's going to be amazing, uh, and then uh, also probably the biggest one, uh, C Street. Uh, we have finally gotten an answer from the Department of Ecology. I wanted to make sure that the community was aware of it. We will be sending the uh, information out as soon as uh, we we receive their flyer, basically. But we'll be sharing that on all of our uh, social media platforms. The comment period on the C Street uh, landfill will open on November 4th, uh, will close on December 7th, and right in the middle of that, uh, the Department of Ecology will be hosting an information session on November 18th from 6.30 to 7.30, uh, and we will make sure to uh, share those dates again um, and uh, to make sure that uh, people have an invite to the information meeting. It's not a hearing, uh, but it is an information uh, information providing meeting. So make sure people have an opportunity to access that. Lastly, uh, looking ahead, a uh, couple of things coming up, but the one I think I'm most excited about on the 26th, a uh, week from today, uh, we will be presenting you our uh, options for new logos. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that along with an animal ordinance to go along with the, uh, the Kids of Humane Society agenda item that you heard tonight. So we have uh, several great logos, uh, several great designs that I think are really representative and I uh, can't wait for you to see them. And with that, um, oh, you should probably mention on uh, November 2nd, uh, we have a few things coming, the Safe Routes to School that was mentioned briefly earlier this evening, uh, resurfacing of Brockdale Road, uh, and also a couple of the items uh, that were on your business agenda tonight, uh, the prosecution services contract, the latecomers agreement, and the public camping ordinance. Uh, and with that, I am uh, uh, done and happy to answer any questions. Excuse me. Um, all right, so thank you, Jeff. Does the council have any new items for discussion tonight? I do. Uh, I'll defer to Councilmember McDowell. She beat me to the punch. Hey, I'll be first. I just want to make a little comment. November 2nd, get out and vote. Thank anyway, that's all I had to say. All right. Joe? Yeah, uh, you know, the last week or so as we've been reviewing the homeless encampment ordinance, um, one of the topics that has come up, I've noticed in between uh, feedback, uh, relates to trespassing and the trespass ordinance or law around that. Um, I would like to learn more about that and how that is um, utilized uh, in the city limits. Um, so I guess to the city manager and council members, if there's an appetite to learn more about that, I would like 
Uh, I would like more information about what trespassing actually means from a criminal uh, perspective and how it's being leveraged around our community um, in, in different circumstances. So um, as we progress through this, I think that's one of those things in code and law that it's good to probably understand. Um, but that was just one topic that uh, I found I was not as uh, aware of as I thought I was and in, uh, in certain areas of the community, uh, that terminology gets interchanged, I think, sometimes. And um, it may be part of some of the reason we are having some internal conflicts between other organizations when, when we're trying to resolve uh, homeless behavior or adverse behavior uh, in, in the homeless community. So uh, that's one request. Thank you. Happy to happy to put something together for uh, for council to consider uh, at a work session, a future work session. Yeah. Study session. Thank you, guys. All right. So our next council meeting will be on Tuesday, November second, twenty twenty one, at six o'clock. This meeting is adjourned at seven thirty five.